This will be my 15th season gardening on this plot and my fifth with straw bale. I think I've always been interested in gardening. My mother is very much into gardening. When I was growing up, we had vegetable gardens off and on. I think that by the time I was a teenager, my parents had pretty much gotten out of vegetable gardening. My mother always had nice landscaping, but they were always very tolerant of me playing around with vegetables, though I will have to admit that I wasn't a very good gardener. Actually, I don't really consider myself a good gardener now. Uh, my father was quite the gardener. He raised big vegetable gardens every year, but since I didn't live with him, I would only get to see you know, a day or two of the garden, maybe a week of the garden in the summer. I really didn't have a lot of experience with him actually gardening. My grandmother, wow, she was a big gardener, but she was also a farmer. Uh, so maybe I got my enjoyment for gardening or my interest in gardening from them but I think I've always really kind of had an interest in it. What gardening does for me is it's kind of a, a, a grounding activity. I have a lot of interests, a lot of hobbies, and sometimes I actually have a difficult time paying attention to all of them, and gardening is just another one of those, those hobbies. In my work, Whatever work I've been doing, whether it was being a teacher or working in marketing or uh, whatever I've been doing, focusing on what I need to get done is sometimes very difficult for me to do. So it takes a lot of concentration and a lot of effort. When I garden, I just let all that go. I go out into the yard. I have a few things I know I need to get done. And then I just start doing. I just start doing things around the yard and the garden, by the end of the day, I will have been busy the entire day. I will have gotten all kinds of things done, but I probably couldn't tell you why I went out into the garden in the first place. My wife will tell you that it's my therapy. It is my, you know, we kind of joke that you know, I have a bit of attention deficit that ability to go out into a garden and just do and not really think about what I'm doing and just to enjoy being outside and getting my hands dirty and playing with the plants. It's therapeutic. I looked into straw bale gardening uh, five years ago because in my 10th year of gardening on this plot, I had a real problem with a virus that was attacking my tomato plants. It had happened actually two years in a row. What I read about it was about the best way to defeat it was to give the ground a long period of rest and not grow tomatoes on it. And I really couldn't change where my garden was at, so I was looking for alternatives. And I, I looked at container gardening, I looked at raised beds, and then I, I read about straw bale gardening, and it really kind of made sense to me. The, the biologist in me really liked the idea of what you were doing with the straw bales, why it worked, um, how you were creating a microenvironment for the plants to live in. It kept the tomatoes off the ground, and it would give my chance, the chance for my land to, to rest. What I was thinking that first year was, cool, I'll, I'll have this wonderful composted hay at the end of the year, and I'll just till that into the ground, and it'll improve my soil. That's really kind of how I got started. I did a lot of research about straw bale gardening, and, and what I discovered was that there are many people who are out there doing it. Everyone does it a little bit differently. The fundamental principle of what you're doing is the same. There's just many ways to go about getting it started. I also learned that many people who do straw bale gardening are very opinionated about how they do it and what's the best way to do it. One reason I made this video was to share with people who have asked me about my gardens before how I do it and what I've learned from four seasons of straw bale gardening because the scientist in me hasn't enabled me to to keep it the same every year. I've always had to change something, experiment with something. Some years I've even done half the bales one way and the other half another way to see which way works better. 
coming into the fifth year, I've changed some things again, but I've also gone back to some of the things that I have found that have worked really, really well. So how do I, how do I start my straw bale garden? Well, I think one of the first things to remember is when to start. I'm actually getting an early start this year. It is the third week of April. Usually it takes about two weeks to condition the bales. I normally start in May because we generally can't plant peppers and tomatoes and zucchinis and things like that here in Wisconsin until the end of May. If we plant it earlier than that, um, or earlier than Mother's Day, that's usually kind of the, the weekend when people aim at, then you, you risk frost. I actually aim every year for the week before Memorial Day as when I want to put plants in. So I'm usually not starting my straw bale garden until early May. This year I'm starting in April, mostly because we're at home all day, every day, and, and I don't have as much to do. But I also wanted to try some earlier season crops. Um, I want to try some broccoli and some lettuce and some things that normally, if I don't plant them until late May, uh, don't do as well or they bolt. I don't get much of a crop out of it. So I'm starting earlier this year. But you start whenever you want to start. So whenever you are, can are, start planting plants in your garden, then give yourself two to three weeks to prepare the bales. It's pretty important to get straw and not hay. There is a difference. Straw is the leftovers from a wheat field. The material is very inert. There typically isn't a lot of seeds in it. Hay tends to have a lot of weeds and weed seed in it. Hay is a lot more organic. I imagine if you tried composting a hay bale, it would actually compost a lot better than straw will. Straw doesn't have a whole lot of nutrient in it, which is really kind of the point. Um, you can make a straw bale into whatever you want it to be. When you lay out your garden, you can pretty much do whatever you want. My garden um, has been different most years, except the past two years, it was the same layout because I decided to see if I can get two years out of a bale of straw. So two years ago, I put the garden up with new bales, and then at the end of the season, I did not break the bales down and compost them. I just let them stay and then last year I gardened in them again to see how well it would go growing two years in a row in the same bales and uh, it had its good and its bad points. Maybe I'll make another video someday and talk about that but um, in the long run I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it. I actually suggest that you start new bales each year. A bale of straw has, has two sides. It has a cut side and a non-cut side and you can tell by looking at it and the cut side you'll see what looks like the ends of straws sticking straight up and they're all aligned. I don't know how the, the, the bales manage to get that way. I'm not a mechanical engineer but it is pretty cool. But whenever you lay your garden out the most important thing is that the bales be positioned with that cut side up because when you water it water is going to get down inside those straws of, of grass is what it is and um, water is going to get trapped in there and nutrients are going to get trapped in there and it, it just works better with the cut side up. When the bales start to condition and they start to be used for a while they, they tend to kind of change shape or expand or fall apart so it's important to um, hold them together in some way. So I use fence stakes and I pound them in on the ends of the rows of the bales at an angle and then I use a piece of rope or wire. This year I'm using rope and past years I've used wire. Uh, I like the idea of rope because it's more natural and it, it you can see it better. I've run into that wire quite a bit in past years and I don't particularly like that. But I'm going to tie a piece of rope to the top of one stake and you stretch it to the other side of the bale and then you pull them really, really tight and you are basically pulling those poles into the sides of the bales which is drawing the bales together and it's giving them a really solid support on either end of the row. 
And then when you start watering these bales, when they start to expand, they start creating pressure themselves. So having those stakes in there really kind of creates a nice solid foundation for the bale itself. In past years, I have taken wire and instead of putting just one line from the top of a stake to a top of a stake, I've put three lines. So maybe about eight inches up from the top of the bale, 12 inches above that, 12 inches above that, and I use those as the trellis. You can actually kind of thread your plants up through those lines of wire. And I've done that every year, and I've never been completely happy with it. And this year, I did something a little bit different. That's why I'm only putting one line at the top of the stakes, because I'm going to do something else for supporting the plants. The conditioning of the bales is, is very important. And over the years, I have tried many different things from organic fertilizers to almost straight manure, chicken manure. I've played with um, commercial fertilizers. I've, try I've tried basic all-purpose fertilizers, lots of things in it. I've tried just the straight urea, which is pretty much just nitrogen. What you're really doing is you're taking a nitrogen-based fertilizer or something that has some organics in it or some nutrients in it and you're forcing that down into the bale with water and then the, con the combination of the fertilizer and the water and the natural microfauna and microflora that are in the bale are going to start the bale to compost. It's going to start to rot. So really once you add the fertilizers all you really need is water and time. Maybe a little heat so some sunny warm days will help too. Uh, and as the bales compost as they condition you add fertilizer a few times um, or add nutrients to that microfauna microflora that are doing the job for you and then you continue to water it. It's pretty important that they get water every day. So this is what I did this year and I've kind of gone back to what I've learned over the past few years. On day one, I put in a slow-release urea pellet. It's very high concentration. It's a, um, from a fertilizer scale perspective, it's a 4500, so it's pretty much just nitrogen, and it's a lot of it. And I put in a half a cup of that per bale, and then I'm going to water it in. And that's pretty much all I'm doing on day one. On day two, uh, new this year, I haven't done this before, I have decided to put on what's called an activated manure. So it's an activated compost that has got microflora, microfauna in it. This one is a product that is produced by a local company called um, Purple Cow. Um, it's got a really good reputation and I'm going to spread it over the top of each bale and kind of pat it in and I'm going to water that in as well and my hypothesis is that it's going to help jump start the bales but it's also going to give a little bit of soil onto the top of the bale that's going to help seeds to be able to get a good root because I'll, I'll tell you one of the challenges I've had with straw bale gardening is growing things from seed. Putting plants into the bale, a pepper plant, a tomato plant, things like that works really really well but starting things from seed, mm, it's been a hit or miss. So on day two I'm simply adding this uh, activated manure and watering it in and on day three all I'm doing is watering it again, just watering it down. So on day four I'm going to add a different product called Malorganite and it is another nitrogen based fertilizer much lower concentration than that urea is it's a fast release which means it'll dissolve a lot faster and the whole idea of adding Malorganite is just to keep some nitrogen in that bale so that the microflora and microfauna are not starved and they can continue to do their job I'm adding one cup per bale and I'm going to scratch that in with a garden fork to break up that surface tension on top of the bale and help work it in and just water that in. And then on days 5 through 15, uh, so from this point forward, the bales will get watered every day 
um, unless I get really heavy downpour rains. But even if it's a light rain, I'm still going to go out and give a good drink to each of those bales. And then every other day, I'm going to add half a cup of that melorganite just to continue feeding the bale. For those of you that do aquariums, you can think about this as like a fishless cycling where you add bacteria to your filter system and then you add ammonia every day to feed that filter system and once the bacteria bed has been conditioned then you can add fish to the tank. So that's basically what straw bale gardening is, is you are plantless cycling these bales and turning them into a substrate in which the plants are going to grow very well. So what's different this year? Well, the layout's different for one. I've got three big rows. Previous years I've had shorter rows or I've had squares. What I call the potato and onion patch, which is that center section of what looks like soil, that is all composted straw from the past two years of gardening. So everything that I'm forking in here is actually the straw bales from the past two years. And what I've discovered doing that in the past couple of years is that potatoes and onions grow in this really well, but potatoes and onions do not grow in a straw bale very well. And uh, we like our potatoes and onions, so I'm going to grow quite a bit of those this year. And the other thing that's new are these cattle panel trellises. Cattle panels are, you can buy them at a farm supply store. They come 16 feet long. A sawzall will, or a hacksaw will, or, or a, a bolt cutter will clip them pretty easily. And then I'm going to uh, just stake them to the ground in between two rows of hay. And this is where I'll be able to trellis green beans and trellis tomatoes and, and trellis cucumbers. I will actually start planting these bales uh, here in about you know two weeks and I'm going to start with cold weather plants, um, seed, some radishes, some broccoli, some lettuce. The center part, the potatoes and the onion patches, I'm actually going to plant those before I plant the bales. They don't really need to condition and I want to get the onion starts and the potatoes into the ground as quickly as possible, they'll, they're pretty cold tolerant, so even if they sprout, they're not going to get hurt by a frost. Green beans do extremely well, and I can a lot of green beans every year. Tomatoes do very well, peppers do very well, cucumbers and zucchinis do very well, herbs do very, very well. So I kind of plant a mix. Every year I plant something a little bit different, but those are the main parts. You know, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, zucchini and green beans are the big part. Sometimes I grow some green leafies like shard or collard greens, things like that. Well, that's, that's it. Basically, that's how I start a straw bale garden. I will probably update you on this garden a little later in the year once things start growing or maybe I'll update whenever I actually plant most of the bales themselves. And if we do that, then we'll be able to see what I plant early and how it did and then I can show you how I put in the tomato plants and the peppers plants and things like that and then maybe we'll do another one of these you know later in the season when the when the garden actually starts to produce um, so I hope you enjoyed this video about straw bale gardening it's a departure from the type of programming I normally do on this uh, video channel but I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that if you're interested in gardening and you have some space and would like to try straw bales that it will help you get started thanks for watching